Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to have you all with me today. Let me just adjust that camera slightly. How is everyone? I'm running a few minutes late. I'm so sorry. I had a late start to the day today after not much sleep through the night. So um, a little bit slow on it today. But oh good, I'm here. So hopefully people will um, get my notifications that I'm live and will join us shortly. So while that's happening, um, I will just bring this up on my iPad. So let me just log in here and we'll get everything all set up and then that way I can see all of your comments if you're joining me here live today. So if you are joining me live, thank you so much. And if you're watching the replay, thank you as well. Um, and also too, if you're visiting my YouTube channel after I upload this, thank you so much for watching my video. All right, so great. Alrighty, we have got comments up. So all good, I can see your comments there. Hey Megan, how you going? Getting some paperwork done and watching the college baseball from the States. Ah, oh, awesome. You love your American sport, don't you, Megan? That's so great. It's really great to have um, lots of different interests, isn't it? That's awesome. Um, I actually come from, well, I wouldn't say a family of sports lovers. My mum was a sports lover. The rest of us, um, not so much. Oh, one of my sisters. Um, one of my sisters is a surfer, and and she used to do athletics and stuff. So I guess she likes sport. Um, but uh, yeah, me not so much. <laughs> I used to love things like roller skating, ice skating, horse riding, those sorts of things. If you can um, call those sports. Um, but yeah, I can't do any of those anymore because of my back now. So, but that's all good. I can craft instead. Hey Deborah, how are you going? Great to have you with us today. Hi Glenda, great to have you with us. Um, how am I going with my new do? Thank you. Yes, well, um, I am liking it. I washed it yesterday and it was so quick and easy. I went to sort of run my shampoo through my hair and I'm like, oh, oh, there's no more hair. <laughs> So that was funny, but it was really quick to, to blow dry. Um, it's gone a little bit flat overnight because I, you know, slept on it, obviously. So it's it looked really lovely yesterday after I blow dried it, but it's, it's a bit flat again now because it's so dead straight. But yeah, no, it's good. It's really good. I have a very short stumpy ponytail, though, if I tie it in a ponytail. So <laughs> I might not be tying it back too, too much until it gets a little bit longer. Um, yeah, so... Ah, thanks, Megan. Thank you. Yeah, it's quite a bit shorter, isn't it, than what it was? <laughs> it was it was um, way down to my lower back before, and now it's just below my shoulders. So, yeah, it's taking a little bit of getting used to, and especially for the family. I think they're so used to me having long hair for such a long time. It's been a long time since I've had it this short. So, yeah. All right, we're going to be playing with some new product today, but um, before we do that, oh, I forgot to grab out my seals running so late. Um, as I was saying, I didn't get much sleep last night, so I actually lay in bed awake. Hang on, I've got a hair stuck on, speaking of hair, I've got a hair stuck on my desk. Ah, oh, there we go. And I thought that's going to show up on camera, perhaps. So I just got rid of that. Um, what was I saying? Yes, had a slow start to the, to the morning because I didn't get much sleep through the night. And in all my rush to get ready, I forgot to pull out my brochures and flyers to show you. Um, but that's okay, I'll just tell you about them anyway. Um, so I wanted to firstly let you know that I have got a, um, my latest class available and the RSVP closes um, tomorrow, the 26th of April. So it, we're going to be using the um, Flowering Fields designer series paper from the mini catalog, um, which let me grab for you and I'll show you what we're gonna be using. I'll wheel over on my wheelie chair. And I shall show you what we're going to be playing with in my next class. And the projects are so pretty. And we're creating um, six projects. So we have 
three designs and we create two of each of the designs but this is the so it's part of the um, flowering fields suite but we're focusing on the paper the ribbon and the beautiful brushed brass butterflies have to say that really slowly <laughs> so they're the products that are in the class um, I'll pop up the link for you if you want to have a look um, you can have a look there on the link and also there's a registration form there if you would like to join in that class um, now let me just pull that up I've got my laptop over to the side today um, so and it's a little bit far away so I've got to try and see where my link is uh let's see um class class registration links do, 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 do. there it is okay so i will copy that and i'm going to put it into the comments oh actually hang on one sec let me just refresh my page over there on my computer because i can't see my live on there yet oh there we go okay so I will pop it there in the comments. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry, I'm getting myself all organized here. Um, flowering fields, card making class. There we go. Okay, so that should be up in the comments waiting for my iPad to catch up because it's always slow. So there is the link. Oh, there we go. The link has just popped up now for you. So if you want to check that out, have a look and see um, what is involved in the class and then decide that if uh, decide if you would like to do um, our class or not. And um, as I said, it closes on Tuesday the 26th of April. So that's when registrations close. So be sure to um, register for that class. It's going to be um, a great class the projects are beautiful and um, that designer series paper is just gorgeous so um, you'll get half a pack of that designer series paper in the class um, a full um, reel of real spool I should say of ribbon and half a pack of the brushed bath brass butterflies um, and then all the other details are there as well in that um, in that um, link that I've just popped up so be sure to check that out um, the other thing I've got too is a paper share. Um, for those of you who love your designer series paper, and of course we all do, don't we? Because we're paper crafters. So of course we love all the pretty paper. Um, with the new annual catalogue that's coming out, which I haven't spoken about yet, but I'm about to, we've got our brand new annual catalogue coming out on the 3rd of May. Um, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like one of these beautiful catalogues, let me know and I would love to send one out to you. Um, just uh, send me a message or I do actually have a uh, form that you can fill in as well to request a catalogue and I can pop that one up for you now as well. Um, but also too, there are so many beautiful designer series papers that are coming out in the new catalogue. Now, if you don't want to outlay the money to get all of those papers all at once because you know it can add up because they're um uh, each packet is well they're different prices depending on the number of pa papers in the packet um but with a paper share you get a sample of each one of those um paper packs so you actually get a quarter pack of each one of those paper packs and then from there you can decide which ones are your favorites and once you use up that quarter pack then you can go ahead and buy a whole new pack if that's the paper that you love. So if you'd like to get in on my paper share, um, then I'll pop up the link for that as well. Let me pull up the link for both of those for you. Um, I should have put my computer closer. <laughs> it's very hard to see over there. Um, okay, so we've got... I'll pop both of those up. Um... There we go. So we'll do, 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 do that and I'll pop them in the comments. Oh, actually, I don't know. I better do them separately. I was going to put them in the same um, comment, but I better do them separately because it'll probably pop up with the, um, with the actual form. Uh, okay, so there's the catalogue request form and let's pop in... 
So popping all these links into the comments during a live is new a new thing for me. I've only just started to do it. And so I'm still getting the hang of doing that during a live. I haven't got the process down pat yet. So <laughs> bear with me while I, um, while I get that all sorted. So there we go. So now you've got there in the comments, you've got the link to my Flowering Fields um, class. You've got the link to request an annual catalogue. That's the new beautiful annual catalogue. And um, you've got the um, paper share link there as well if you want to take a look. So you can take a look, you can click on all of each of those links and take a look. It doesn't mean that you're subscribing because to subscribe or request a catalogue, you have to fill in um, the Google form that's there attached to the information. So feel free just to click on each of those links and just have a look and decide if any of those you would like to take advantage of. And then um, if you would, then you can fill out the form that's attached there and then I'll get notified of those. And then, yeah, I can help you out with all of those things. So there we go. Lots happening. Very exciting. So we've only got, what have we got, a week, I think? Uh, a week tomorrow. A week tomorrow till the brand new catalogue comes out, which is super exciting. And there's so many beautiful products in here. Now, if you missed my unboxing video a couple of weeks ago, be sure to go back and um, check out my videos. Uh, that's both here on Facebook and on YouTube. And you'll be able to see the unboxing of some of those beautiful products. Now, as demonstrators, we can get our hands on some of these beautiful products right now um, because we get the opportunity to purchase in the pre-order, the demonstrator pre-order. So we get our products a little bit earlier than everybody else. We get them like usually a whole month earlier, which is really exciting. So if you'd like to get any of those products now, then you are welcome to join my team and I can help you out with that. And any of those pre-order products you can put into your starter kit right now. Now, when I say um, join my team, don't be worried. You don't need to sell product. You can just simply join to enjoy the discount for yourself. So you will start with a 20% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products. And then you can build that up over time to 25% if you choose to. Or you can just stay at 20%. Um, so there's no lock-in period when you join. You can stay as long as you like, leave whenever you're ready. Um, there's absolutely no lock-in period at all. And it's as easy as just going back to being a customer. So you just stop ordering as a demonstrator, go back to being a customer. Um, there's no exit penalties or anything like that. So super, super easy. Um, to join, you only pay $169 and you can choose up to $235 worth of product in your starter kit. So you can choose any of the products that you like to pop in there, including, as I said, those pre-order products right now. Um, so there are lots and lots of beautiful products to choose from. And also too, we still have our mini catalog running as well, which also has lots of beautiful products. So if you already have a long wish list, um, or perhaps you're just getting started with uh, card making or paper craft. And of course, when we're starting out, there's lots of things that we want. And, you know, we want to have the, the, um, the tools like our trimmer, and you might want to have a um, stamp and cut and emboss machine, or some of the, the little tools and things like that, then it's a great way to get all of those um, by purchasing that starter kit and becoming part of my team. And I'll look after you as well, and I will help you along. Um, but please, if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me and um, ask me any questions that you have. And just so you know, there are never any silly questions. You can ask me anything and I'll be happy to help you. And even if you just want the information and then decide if it's right for you, that's okay too. There's absolutely no pressure. So feel free to get in contact with me and ask me any questions that you might have. Um, you can find my contact links in my bio attached here on my um, Facebook page and also on YouTube if you're watching over there later. Um, or you can send me a direct message as well here on Facebook. Um, if you would like me to get in contact with you, um, best not to leave a comment for me to contact you in the comments here on this video because Facebook often hides some of the comments so I don't always get to see all of them. But I do have a message button at the top of my page. So if you click on that um, message button, 
then that'll actually send me a private message and that's the best way to contact me. And my phone number is also here in my bio as well. If you want to give me a call, feel free to do that too. Just so you know, I don't always answer my phone because sometimes I'm filming or I'm um, busy in a meeting. Um, so just leave me a voice message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so just let everybody know that because I'm not always available to pick up my phone, but I will get back to you usually within the hour or two. All right, let me catch up on some of these comments. Um, who else have we got that is jumping on? Let's see, let's see. Kathleen's here. Hi, Kathleen. Great to have you with us today. Amanda's here too. Hi, Amanda. How are you going? Great to have you all here. So we here in Australia have a um, public holiday today, actually, for Anzac Day. So we're remembering all of the um, service people who have um, served for our country and continue to serve for our country. And so we have a public holiday in um, memory of that today. So um, lots of us are on holidays. I was tossing up whether or not I would take the whole day off. And then I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to go live because a lot of other people might be at home today and might be looking for some crafty inspiration. So I thought I'm going to go live. Um, hey, Kat, great to have you with us. So, um, yeah. Oh, and Megan said it's Veterans Day in the US. Oh, there you go. Same same date is it, Megan? I didn't I didn't realize that. Well, there you go. So there, yeah, that's awesome. Very good. All right. Well, we are going to be playing with some new product, as I said today, from the new annual catalog. Now I can't show you the inside of the new catalog just yet, but in only eight days I'll be able to when the catalogue goes live and you can see I've already started my wish list so I already have some new product as I said to you but this are uh, these are the rest of the things that are still on my wish list that weren't in the pre-order so I haven't got them yet um, and I haven't been to um, Officeworks our local station as yet to have my catalogue spiral bound because I always like to get it spiral bound every year I'm hoping to do that this week um, so yes, hopefully all will go well and I'll be able to get there this week. So um, they're the things that I had to tell you about. I don't think there's anything else at the minute, but I'll probably think of something later or as we're crafting. So how about we get started? I will um, cover up the camera so that you don't all get dizzy and I'm going to tip the camera down onto my desktop and then we can get started. All right, here we go. Bear with me for one moment. Alrighty, I'll do a little flippity flip of the screen. Great. And just adjust this. Oh, hang on a minute. That's not right. There we go. Nearly had it all wonky. Alright, I'll just tighten up these clamps so that my phone doesn't drop while I'm filming. There we go. Some light down. Whoa, there goes. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry for that noise. There goes my um what do you call it? My um thingy off my lamp. I can't think even what it's called. It always falls off this one. It's so annoying. There we go. Okay, sorry for the big loud bang. <laughs> it's all good. Everything's okay. Oh. Alrighty, so how is that? Is that straight now? See if I got that straight. Oh, that's not too bad. Good. All right, and we got the lights happening now too. So yeah, so uh, the shade, that's it. The, uh, the lamp shade on my lamp. One of them in particular is always loose and often when I touch it, it just falls off. The other one is tight, so, and they're exactly the same lamp because I have one on each side of my desk. So I don't know why, um, but yes, I probably really should replace it at some point. <laughs> All right, so um, as I said, I am playing with brand new product today. Um, uh, it will be available, it's available to customers, uh, sorry, to demonstrators right now and will be available to customers from the 3rd of May. Now, if you are shopping with me, um, you can go to my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and there you will find um, a shopping link. You'll find other creative inspiration. You can click there on some of my blog posts to see... Um, some more inspiration. Uh, there's PDFs there of the current catalogs and when the new catalog goes live there'll be a PDF there of that as well. 
Um, and if you are shopping with me, be sure to use my host code. So this one here on my desk right now is my April 2022 host code. So when the new catalogue goes live, I'll have a different host code. So if you're looking for these new products, be sure to use the, the uh, May host code. But if you are shopping for any current products, then be sure to use this one in April. Um, remember too that we do have the last chance product sales at the moment, which I forgot to mention, and I don't have my flyer with me because I forgot to pull it out. Um, but lots of products from the current annual catalogue, which are retiring, are on special. And they're only available while supplies last, and quite a few things have already sold out. Um, so although there's still quite a few left too so be sure to check those out as well um, so you can pop over to my online store via my blog and just um, have a little browse around have a look and see what's there see if there's anything that you're interested in alrighty so first of all let me tell you about the new um, products that we're going to be playing with today so, as I said, I can't show you the inside of the catalogue, but I can show you the products. So we're going to be playing with the products from the Tea Boutique suite today. And we have got some gorgeous products in that suite. We have got the beautiful stamp set. So this is the Cup of Tea stamp set, which has coordinating dies as well. These are the... Um, whoop, I'm still getting my head around all the names of the new products. The teacup dies, and you've got 17 dies in that die set. So um, that's lots and lots of dies. And in the stamp set, you've got um, 20 stamps. So it's actually a really big um, collection, this one. Now, you can purchase these products individually. Uh, well, you will be able to. Or you can purchase them together as a bundle and you'll save 10% when you purchase them together as a bundle, which is the best way to purchase them, really. Um, I always suggest that. And, of course, if you buy the stamp set, you'll be wanting the dies because the dies will cut out uh, all of the shapes and the designs here on the stamp set, as well as you've got some additional dies. You've got some additional little love hearts. Um, you've got some additional little um, cutouts, so for the teacup, um you've got uh extra little you've got duplicates of some of the dies which makes it a lot quicker if you're um die cutting some of those smaller images so you've got two of the little tiny tea bag um the tea bag what's the little thingy on the end of the tea bag the little handily bit I'm trying to think what that's called. I've gone blank. You'll all have to... The tags. That's it. Thank you, Megan. The tags on the tea bag. So there's a large one and two smaller ones. Um, then you've got two of the larger flower, two of the leaves. Um, and the hearts, there's not actually any... You'll notice that there's not actually any heart um, stamps in the stamp set. So the hearts are an additional um, die. So let's have a look at the stamp set. You've got two different types of teacups. You've got a striped one and um, a leafy image one. You've got some um, leafy images there that you can pop in the teacup, which we're going to be using today. And then you've got some flowers that do coordinate with that as well, if you want to add flowers. You've got an additional um, leaf there, and then there's a small one there. You've even got a little um, lime or lemon wedge if you like lemon tea or lime tea, um, you can use that as well. Then you've got your little tea bag tag, and then you've got all these gorgeous sentiments. Now, some of these sentiments are really tiny, and they fit inside the tea bag tag, which is super cute. Oh, hey, Helen, how are you going? I just saw that you jumped on. Great to have you with us. Um, who else have we got? Let me just, I'm just scrolling back to see. Um... Oh, Dimity's here. You made it, Dimity. Hi, great to have you with us today. Awesome. Um, oh, Deborah said, with your paper share, is it half of each DSP pack? So with the paper share, it's a quarter pack. Yeah, so that's in the, um, if you go to the link of the, um, the link of the paper share, You'll see there the description of all of the different papers that you get. But basically with the paper share, the paper share is a quarter pack. Um, with my class, however, for the flowering fields, that might be where the, 
where there's a bit of confusion with my classes if we're focusing on a designer series paper then it's a half pack for that class but yeah for the new annual catalog designer series paper share it's actually a quarter pack of each of those packs that are listed in the um, registration information yeah um Okay, do, do, do. oh, Megan's off to watch her Trojans game in the baseball, the American baseball. Okay, Megan, no worries. We will catch you on the replay. Oh, good. Um, oh, you just remembered I was on. That's okay, Helen. I was a little bit late today because I had a, a, a bit of a um, sleepless night, so I slept in a bit, had a bit of a late start today. So anyway, so these are the beautiful stamps and dies. Um, so as I said, you can get those together in... Um, a, a bundle and that's the best way to purchase them because you will save yourself some money now let's pop those to the side we're going to be having a little play with those a bit later and let me show you all the beautiful paper oops oh I just mucked them up so the papers Oh, they're all upside down and back to front. So we've been playing with these papers, obviously, um, today, designing the project for this afternoon. And so I've chopped into some of these. Now, when you purchase this um, pack of papers, they come in six by six inch pieces and you get 48 pieces in the paper pack. Um, so there's 12 different designs and you get four of each of those designs. So I'm just spreading them out a little bit for you. I had them around sideways, sorry. But they are such gorgeous designs. Now you'll notice too that if you have seen the, um, the new in colours that are coming out, so the 2022 to 2024 in colours, you'll see those in colours in this designer series paper. They're actually featured in there. And there's a couple of additional colours as well, but um, the focus is on the designer series paper, uh, sorry, the in colours in this designer series paper. But you can see all these beautiful patterns and I love all these teacups and teapots. They're so sweet. And you've got these ones where they're growing little plants out of them. Um, and then if we turn these papers over, let's see if I can do this. Whoop. This is the reverse side. Now I've chopped into some of these because these are some that we're using today. Um, a little sneaky peek there. But uh, they're just so beautiful. So we've got some added colours in there. We've got crushed curry and fresh freesia as well in there. And I think there was um, a petal pink as well. So fresh, yeah, crushed curry, fresh freesia, petal pink. They are not in colours, but they've been added to um, the paper pack. And there's also crumb cake as well. Um, and garden green. Garden green is in some of the greenery as well. We're actually going to be stamping with garden green today. So yeah, garden green is in some of this greenery. So isn't that just beautiful paper? So yes, that comes as six by six sheets. And um, what else is in the suite? Um, oh, the other thing that is in the suite is um, cards and envelopes. So they're pre-printed cards and envelopes, but I actually don't have them at the moment to show you. Um, I haven't ordered those yet. So, but they are part of this suite as well, and they're really beautiful, and they are in the new in colors. So let me show you the new in colors if you haven't already seen them. So we have these beautiful colors. We've got um, Parakeet Party. I'll show you up this way. We've got Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky. And I highlighted these in my... Um, new product unboxing a couple of weeks ago so feel free to go back and see those these come in um, the design the six by six designer series paper they come in ink pads they come in cardstock both in 12 by 12 and in um, a4 um, and in america of course they will come in your um, america and the U uh, canada they'll come in your um, us letter size we also have the stamp and blends as well and they come in yep that's the one parakeet party they come in a um color combo so you get the light and the dark in each one of those colors they come in stamp and write markers 
Um, they come in two different types of ribbon. So they come in Baker's Twine, which we're using today in the five different colors. And there's also another ribbon, which I don't have out right now, um, which is a metallic ribbon. And then of course, we've got the beautiful bling as well, which we'll be using today. So yeah, so lots of um, products that coordinate together. And that's great. Thing, that's a great thing with the Stampin' Up! products is you get all of these beautiful coordinating products um, that work so well together. So we're going to be using some of those today. And we're also going to be throwing in a couple of additional colors too. All right. So today I'm actually doing a card for a sketch challenge so um, it's for a slimline card now you might remember that in our mini catalog we saw the first products um, for slimline cards so we've got and now I'm probably not going to be able to find them because I didn't tag them we've now got um, slimline envelopes which I pulled those out for this project from the mini catalog um, let's have a look. I think it's, I think they're on page 53. Let me just see. And so I'm making, yeah, here we go. So these are some of the products in the mini catalog for slimline cards, but of course you can make a slimline card with anything, but we do now have the Stampin' Up! slimline envelopes. So I pulled those out to use today, um, for this card and they I love them that they've got these beautiful designs on the inside as well and they come in three colors they're in um, the white which is what I'm using and they come in soft succulent and smoky slate as well in the pack so I grabbed one of those out to use for my slimline card today um, but this is only really my I think this is only about my second or third slimline card that I have made but we've got these awesome um, other products that coordinate beautifully with slimline cards and special dies as well from the mini catalog um, but yeah I'm going to be making a slimline card today with the um, cup of tea bundle so we're going to be using these ones all right so the first thing we're going to do is um, bring in some, and I'm incorporating some uh, designer series paper in there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp some. Um, now, I don't have the finished card to show you yet because I was still designing it right up until I went live today. Um, however, I do have a guideline of where we're going. So all good. <laughs> so I kind of know what we're doing. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be starting with a base of Orchid Oasis, our new beautiful Orchid Oasis. It is so pretty and to create your, um, sorry, I'll put this, this white piece to the side. That was for our stamping. I was jumping ahead. For your um, base, you're going to want a piece that is um, 21 centimetres long by 19 centimeters wide so 21 centimeters is actually um, the width of your cardstock already your a4 cardstock so if you were looking at an a4 piece of cardstock that would be the um, short edge along the top and then it would be long this way so if you leave it at that full width and then you just cut the opposite direction at 19 centimeters so you end up with a piece that is 21 by 19 centimeters and then you're going to score and fold that at 9.5 centimeters so that's across the 19 centimeter edge you're going to score and fold that at 9.5 centimeters and that gives you your slimline card and then that is going to fit beautifully into your um, slimline envelope and in fact you'll actually have a little bit of room either end as well with that measurement so you'll have plenty of room to be able to get that into your envelope okay so that's the first step then you're going to need a piece of basic white and the basic white piece is going to go on the front there like so and that's just going to give you a nice little two millimeter border around each of the edges and that one measures 9.1 centimeters by um, 20.6 centimeters okay then we're going to need some designer series paper to do our stamp oh sorry some white 
uh, basic white cardstock to stamp our teacups. Now I just pulled out, um, we're going to be stamping three teacups and I just pulled out a piece of, um, this is really basically just a card front. So this one measures, um, let me think, 10.5 10 10 by 14.85. Um, thereabouts or just just grab out some scraps to stamp some teacups on and you'll need some greenery as well and a label so we might need a little bit extra than that um, but that's okay we can use up scraps and things like that that you have I always have plenty of white scrap around and then as well as that you're going to need um, some of the designer series paper and you're going to need three little squares so here's our T Boutique um, 6x6 Designer Series paper. And the ones that I chose were this one, this one, and this one. So I've chosen these three papers, but, so let me just pop these other ones away. What we're going to do is we're going to turn them over and I'm using a little square of the red side of that one. I'm using the, the leafy, florally side of that one. And then the teacup side, I'm actually using the blue um, gingham sort of side, which looks a little bit like, it looks it reminds me of a um, tablecloth, actually. So each one of those squares are going to be three by three centimeters. So you can see I've already um, cut mine out. So here's my little, whoops. Here's my little squares ready to go. So three by three centimeters, there they are. Oops, there we go. Okay, so that's where we're starting with. Um, and so we're now going to just start with stamping our images and then we'll put together our card. All right. So I'm going to um, bring in my stamp and pierce mat because the stamp set that we're using today is a photopolymer stamp set. So it's always good to have um, something cushioning underneath. You can use a stamp and pierce mat. You can use a mouse mat upside down. So you've got the foam side up. Um, if you have a stamparatus, you can use the foam mat from your stamparatus as well. Um, but yeah, because these are a clear photopolymer stamp set and I've pulled out the ones that we're going to be using today, um, they don't have any give in them when you're stamping. So it's good to have that cushioning underneath and it'll give you a nicer um, stamped finish. So the colours that I have chosen today that we're going to be stamping our teacups in are Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis, excuse me, reaching over to my stamp pads, and Starry Sky. And then the greenery, we're actually going to be stamping in the garden green. When I was testing this, I did stamp it in the Parakeet Party, but it was really, really light and uh, didn't stand out enough on the, um, the white background. So I went with the garden green and the garden green is in the designer series paper as well. So it coordinates. Um, and we're going to be stamping our sentiment as well in Starry Sky. I've also got a little dauber. Um, I broke out a new packet of daubers today for my new uh, in colours because I haven't used them yet till today. Uh, well, I haven't used daubers with the inks. Um, so the sponge daubers can be found in my online store right now or in um, the annual catalogue and they are carrying over into the new annual catalogue. They come in a pack of five, which is perfect because I've got one for every new in colour. So. Um, I've just pulled one out ready to use today. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, we're going to stamp our Orchid Oasis. Oh, hi, Mas Mahaswari, how are you? It's great to have you with us today. We are playing with the cup of tea bundle today and, um, and the beautiful designer series paper. So, and we're making a slim line card. I keep forgetting the names of everything. T Boutique, 6x6 Designer Series Paper, that's the one. Um, yes, I'm getting my head around all of... It is a beautiful bundle, isn't it? Yes, I'm still getting my head around all of the new um, product names. <laughs> 
All right, so the teacups I've decided to stamp today are the striped ones because I sort of wanted to make like a set of teacups, um, but in different colors, but still look like they um, belonged in a set. So I'm using the striped one today. So we're gonna start off first with our um, Orchid Oasis. This is a really beautiful color. It's a very purpley blue. When you put it with the um, blues, it looks really purple. Whoops, oh, I didn't stamp that very well. Let me do that again. And when you put it with the purple cardstock, it actually looks really blue. So it's like a bluey purple. On its own, it looks quite blue, but then, yeah, it can look different depending on what it's sitting next to. So, okay, so we've got that one. Then I'll give that a little clean. So I'll just stamp off the excess ink first and give that a little clean. So we're using um, highly pigmented inks today. So you might find that your stamp becomes a little bit colored. It might not be so um, clear as before, but that's okay. So long as you remove that surface ink, then um, you'll be good to go and it won't damage your, your stamp. All right, so this one is the Starry Sky. So this one's really deep. That one's a very dark blue. It's not as dark as um, Night of Navy though. So we'll give that one a clean on our Simply Shammy. And then I always check mine to make sure I got all that ink off. Great, good. And then I'm going to leave the Starry Sky out. I'll just move that to the side because we're going to use that again in a moment for our sentiment. And then we're going to use the Sweet Sorbet. Now, just a tip with the um, red inks or the deep pink inks, they hold a lot of pigment that can color up your um, photopolymer stamps quite a bit. So it's um, a good idea to make sure that you clean your stamps immediately after stamping with them and give them a really good hard scrub. And in fact, if you've got Stampin' Mist and a Stampin' Scrub, then um, which you can find in the annual catalog or in the tool section in my online store, it's a really good idea to give it a good scrub with that as well. Um, I'm gonna turn my chamois over to the clean side and give it a good clean on that too. Because if you don't remove all of that red pigment, it can color up um, when you're stamping other colors. So you've got to make sure that you get all of that red pigmented ink off your stamp. Okay, there we go. So we've got our teacups and now I will um, stamp my sentiment. So I'm just going to grab a scrap over here and I'm going to stamp the little stamp that says, thank you for your friendship. There's lots of different ones there that you could use, but I wanted a long sentiment and I'm going to use um, one of our new die sets to die cut that and I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm just going to stamp that down there. Thank you for your friendship. Oh, we also need a little tag as well, a little tea bag tag. I'll turn this back over to the yucky side. I'm trying to keep one side nice and clean as much as as long as I can because <laughs> otherwise I tend to make both sides stain up straight away I like to have a clean side all right and then I'm going to use the little tea bag tag as well and I'll stamp that I'll actually just stamp that over here there we go I'm stamping that in the starry sky don't you love the name of that that color starry sky I think that's really be a really beautiful name for a colour because we all love the starry sky, don't we? Oh, I still haven't got all the ink off that. Let me turn my chamois over to the clean side. There we go. Good. It's always a good idea to test your um, stamps. Make sure you get all that ink off. And in fact, I meant to rinse out my chamois before I started today and I completely forgot. So there we go. All right, and now the other thing that we need is our greenery. So we're going to stamp that in garden green because we're putting it on a white background. As I said before, the parakeet party didn't really stand out too well. Um, I'm just gonna turn that up that way. And so it didn't stand, it looked lovely. It's a lovely color. It's beautiful actually, I love it. Um, it's probably my favorite color of all of the new ink colors. It just wasn't as deep as I wanted it to stand out, you know, on this 
card. So I went with the darker green. Okay, so we'll give that one a clean now. Check that, that one's nice and clean. Awesome. Okay, so now we can die cut all of these pieces. So I'm gonna bring in my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're gonna do a little bit of die cutting here. So let's get our die sheets. Oops, and I've put, oh, you might have noticed, I forgot to mention this actually, you might have noticed that I put all of my dies onto magnetic sheets. Um, sometimes when I get new dies, I don't always get them straight on, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it today because we're gonna be using these ones a fair bit. And um, so I put them on die sheets. And then what I do is I actually trace around them with a um, Sharpie, a fine tip Sharpie marker so that I know where they all go. And then that way too is if I'm missing any off my sheet, then I know that I'm missing them. And I also write on here, which you probably can't see in the light, um, the number of dies in the die set so that I know how many I should have on the sheet. Probably can't see that so well under the lights. But yeah, by tracing around them too, you know how to put them all back on to the sheet. This one's pretty good because they all spaced out quite well. Some of the die sheets, there's so many dies that they're quite um, crammed in to fit them all on the sheet. And if you don't have them traced, it can be hard to put them back on and work out where they all fit. So um, yeah, so it's a good idea to trace around them. Alrighty, so I'm going to cut apart these, let me find my good scissors, my paper snips, no, they're my tape ones, here we go. I'm going to just cut these apart because we're going to cut them one at a time, we only have one die and I don't want my plates, my plates are well loved and so I don't want my plates to um, mark up the other parts that we're not using straight away. There we go, okay. So let's see how many dies we can fit on. So I'm using my mini machine. Um, now, which is the teacup that I wanted to use? That one was a bit better, I think. That one didn't stamp so well. All right, so we'll pop a teacup on there. Um, oh, another good thing is too, that with the new um, mini, uh, sorry, the new annual catalog, the new annual catalogue, we are getting our new magnetic sheets for our um, stamp and cut and emboss machine, which is super exciting. So the large one, um, the large machine or our standard machine will be available first. The one for the mini machine is still being um, finalised. They're still finalising a few things with that. So it will be available um, coming very soon. But the large one's going to be available next week when the catalog goes live so that's super exciting so we won't be having to use all this washi tape all the time we'll actually have our magnetic plate which will hold everything in place so I just use at the moment I just use um, retired washi tape so this is retired stampin up washi tape now I need to turn this around so that I can see it up the right way and line that up and just hold that washi tape, uh, hold that um, die in place with a little bit of washi tape so it doesn't move. There we go. And we'll just wind that through our machine. So who else has this um, bundle already and who has been playing with this already? Let me know in the comments if you already have this one. Or if you don't have it yet, is it on your wish list? All right, so there we've got one teacup. Let's pop that. Actually, I'm going to move my dies out of the way. I'll move them over to the side and I can pop my die cut pieces over here. There we go. And also too, you can let me know in the comments how you enjoyed your long weekend. Because as I said, here in Australia, we had a long weekend. Ah, it's on your list, Deborah. Awesome. Good, good, good. Um... Yeah, so let me know too how you enjoyed your long weekend. Did you do something special? I know that some of you um, were planning on going away. Um, we just had a quiet one at home. In fact, I I slept a lot yesterday, which might be why I didn't sleep well last night. But I was just so tired yesterday. So I had a fair bit of rest yesterday. 
didn't do too much. Started to put the house back together a little bit too after our um, repairs last week with the painting and everything being covered in plastic and everything. We had to pack away a lot of things. So we started unpacking them again and putting things back. We've still got a little bit to do. Um, but the bathroom itself isn't complete yet. They did repaint the door and the door frame, but they haven't um, fixed the vanity or what was the other thing? The vanity and the flooring just outside of the um, bathroom as well needs repair. Because some of the, we have floating floorboards and some of the floating floorboards were floating just about <laughs> with, the, with the water leak. They've um, swelled up, so they need to replace them. Um, there we go. Yes, so we spent a bit of time just doing that. But yeah, nothing too much. Just had a quiet one. And then today had a big sleep in because of not having any sleep last night. Um, Glenda said, still waiting for it to come. Hopefully this week. Oh, you're still waiting for your pre-order, are you, Glenda? Ah, oh, things might have taken a little bit longer to get up to you because of the um, recent floods and things. I know that there were some shipping delays because of all the floods and things. I guess they've got a fair bit to catch up on at the moment. Hopefully it'll arrive soon. Should come this week though, surely. Depending on when you ordered it, I guess. But um, I'm excited for the new catalogue going live next Tuesday because um, everything else will be available. Hopefully there's no shipping delays on. Um, there could be though, however. Just be prepared for that. There could be some shipping delays on some of the other new products in the catalogue. They did um, pre-warn us that there might be. Um, we haven't been notified yet. I guess they're probably going to wait um, till closer to the, the catalogue going live because more product might still be coming on its way. Um, but yeah, we will get a list and of course I will let everybody know. I'll let all my customers know if there's things that aren't available. But basically, the best thing to do is to shop online in, in my online store because then you can actually see what is available. Well, actually, let's see if we can die cut. Oh, no, I don't think I'll fit that on at the same time. Um, yeah, so then you can actually see exactly what's available um, when you shop in the online store. I'm still deciding on which things from my wish list I'm going to get next. I've got to um, create my my list. I've got to whittle down my wish list. <laughs> I've got to prioritise it. Do you do that as well? Do you prioritise your wish lists? All right, so we've got our three little teacups cut out and now we just need to do our um, sentiment, but we're using a different die set for the sentiment. It's a br another brand new product. This is the... Um, stylish shapes dies and these ones I haven't yet put on my magnet sheets but I need to because these ones are going to be ones that I'm going to be using all the time I think they're going to be my new go-to dies um, and we're using one of these bannered label dies I'm using one the long um, narrow one there um, but you get one oh now one two three four five six that's right you get six circle dies and each one of those are stitched and I love that you get this small one which is fantastic. You get five of the square dies and there's four of the bannered label dies. All of them are stitched with that beautiful detail. So they're going to be in the new catalogue as well. Alrighty, so I've got my plates on there ready and I'll just line this up, this little sentiment. This was a perfect size for this um, banner label actually, or this banner die, I should say. Perfect size. So I'll just add my washi. There we go, and we'll run that through the die. Now, um, you've probably heard me say it lots of times, but when you have got a die that has straight edges, always run it through end first, because, or even put it at a little bit of an angle, and that'll help your machine to be able to feed it through um, the rollers, because otherwise um, you end up with a big sort of speed bump as you're trying to get it through because it can sort of get a bit stuck on the um, rollers as it goes through with that straight edge. So just always remember that when you're cutting anything with a straight edge. There we go. So there we've got our beautiful little 
um, banner now already done okay so that's it for our all of our die cutting and our stamping so let's get rid of that washi tape all right and keep that little piece of white cardstock because I can still get another label out of that all right so these are all of our um, die cut pieces so we've got our three cups our sentiment our leafy green bit oh and look what I left sitting on my desk I need to put this away straight away so that I don't lose it all right and then we've got our three our little tag as well oh I know there was one more thing I was going to die cut which I forgot and that was some of the little um hearts for the tag let me just grab my I didn't show you all of the um colored cardstock did I I've got um, a large pack of the 2022 to 2024 in color 12 by 12 cardstock because when I went to order my cardstock from pre-order I ordered mine a little bit late and so the um, A4 packets the individual A4 packets of the sweet sorbet were already um, uh, gone from the pre-order they'd already been sold out because obviously Stampin' Up allocates a certain amount for demonstrators so that there's enough ready left there for our customers when the um the catalog goes live so um i ordered a large the a 12 by 12 packet so that i got all of the colors um in all of the other colors i did order the a4 as well and i'll get the sweet sorbet when that is available when the catalog goes live but just to show you i forgot to show you these before but you might have already seen them and you can see I've already chopped into mine quite a bit because we've been cutting cutting them down. We're using up these ones first before I open up my A4 packets. But there's all the beautiful colours. So you can see the um, contrast of those two blues. So we've got the Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky. Aren't they just beautiful? And they look so lovely together, those um, five colours. Really beautiful. So there you go. So yes, available in 12 by 12 and in um, they, they will be available in an A4 um, assortment pack as well as individual colour packs too. So there's lots of different ways you can get them. Um, all right, so I was going to cut, I was going to see what one of these little hearts would look like. Oh, that would be perfect. I'm going to die cut one of these tiny little, well actually it's one of the larger hearts on there. One of these large hearts. Well, it's actually a small heart, but it's the largest of the ones in the um, the die set. So I'll just quickly bring in my mini again. And we'll just quickly do an extra little die cut because I forgot about that little one. I wanted that for my tea bag tag. There we go. Pop. Okay, now we are done. There's my little heart. That's going to go on my tag. How cute is that? So adorable. Alrighty. Okay. So now this card that I'm making today, you, you're going to see this on my blog tomorrow because as I said to you, it's part of a blog challenge that I'm um, entering in for tomorrow. And so you'll see it on my blog tomorrow. Now I'm going to ink around the edges of my sentiment label with um, some starry sky because I'm going to be putting a white label onto a white background and I want this label to stand out. So in order to do that, I'm going to give it a little border. And inking around the edges of my sentiment labels is one of my favorite things to do. You probably see me do this on lots of my um, cards if you follow, if you have been following me. And I just love the um, daubering technique is one of my favorite and most used techniques, actually. I love it. There we go. All right. So now we've just got a little border and that just saves us from having to add any extra um, cardstock layers to that sentiment. We've now got a little border, a little inked border there for our label and that'll stand up. 
All right, let me just check if I've missed any comments. Oh, your email said it will arrive on the 27th to the 29th, Glenda. Oh, okay, so that is, oh, that is this week. Oh my goodness. I can't believe the dates are just going, 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 aren't they? The time is just going so fast. Okay, just checking I hadn't missed any other comments. All good. Let me know if you do have any questions as we're going along and I'd be happy to answer them for you. So I'm going to um, create this card on, well, I'm going to put all the pieces onto this white piece first that I already gave you the measurements of before I put it onto my base because we're going to be wrapping a little bit of twine as well. Um, so I've got my twine here and I was still deciding which colour I was going to go with. So we'll decide that in a moment. But basically my design is going something like this. I'll put that up that way. So we're going to have the three squares going across the top there like that. Then we're going to have some twine underneath my label, which is going to go like that. Then we're going to have the cup stacked down like this. Whoops. Need them stacked. They're going to be um, popped up on dimensionals. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Let me move all of this up a little bit. I'm working off the screen, bottom of the screen there. Must have my camera a bit closer today. Okay, can you see that better now? Um, so we're going to stack these cups up like so. And then, and they're going to be popped up on dimensionals. And then we're going to have the greenery. And then we're going to have the little tag. And I hadn't decided yet which, um, which cup I was going to put the tag on. Probably the bottom one, I think. So I'm going to grab a little mini dimensional first to put my heart on. Let's grab that one to put my little heart on my tag first and just get that secured so then I can play around with that when I get to that stage. Oh, look, mini dimensional just fits perfectly. One little mini dimensional in the center of that. But if you don't have mini dimensionals, that's okay. You can just cut down your um, regular dimensionals. And let's put that at a little bit of an angle. There we go. Yeah, and then I'm going to hang that from one of those. Probably that one, I think. Probably that one. Yeah, so that's kind of how the card is going to look. And then we're going to pop it onto the um, Orchid Oasis base like that. And we'll give a little bit of grounding to this one too. So fairly simple design, but this is kind of the sketch that, um, that we're going with. All right. So I wanted to work out our placement. So the placement, I think, looks pretty good. We've got a little bit of a white border there and there. And we've got enough room there for our um, cups. So I might adhere those little squares down first. So I'm going to use some uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. There we go. And I'm just going to line that up with the edge. And I think, oh yeah, no, they'll fit. Oh, there might be a little tiny, the tiniest of tiny gap between um, between them, but that's okay. You probably won't even be able to tell because they're on a white background. And I'll pop that one down on the edge. So just lining those little squares up with the edge there. I won't push that one down too tight yet until I get this one on as well. And we'll get them all, make sure that we've got them all lined up beautifully. There we go. Yep, I think the sweet sorbet needs to come down just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. So we'll attach those on there. And this is a different way of using your designer series paper too. Like you don't have to use a whole big piece. You don't have to use a whole sheet. You can just use little portions of the designer series paper to um, just highlight them. All right, so now with our cups, I'm going to, um, oh, that's one thing I was thinking of. Will I 
will I ground them with a little bit of um, I've got two options ground them with a little bit of stamp and blends and just give them a bit of shadow or do I ground them with a little bit of the designer series paper but I was thinking that one and that one probably won't work I was wondering about using a strip of the red along the bottom I'm just going to cut a little tiny strip of that red oh it's not red it's sweet sorbet it's actually a, quite a pinky red so I'm going to cut a little strip of that just to see which way shall I go that way uh, just to see how that will look just cut a little one centimeter strip along the bottom I was thinking that might just sort of ground them a little bit if I pop that along the bottom and sit them on the top of that how would that look oh yeah that will look quite good I think I'm gonna do that all right so that needs to be cut at uh, so that's one centimeter wide and that needs to be cut at 9.1 centimeters long so I'm just cutting that just off camera there we go 9.1 centimeters long yep perfect okay and then that also ties in with that designer series paper at the top there too so we've got a lot of the uh, the sweet sorbet on here the sweet sorbet is a really pretty color yeah as I said it's quite a pinky red it's not really red but it's not really pink it's a pinky red whoops there we go good all right so that'll just be a little bit of grounding for our teacups it'll be like they're sitting on a um a tablecloth I'm losing my words today oh my goodness I did say that I was tired <laughs> I am very tired today and uh, I think it's showing <laughs> I'm losing all my words today which is quite quite uh, common for me to do that on a Monday live anyway because I'm always thinking of the next thing the next thing the next thing so we're just popping a few um, dimensionals on the back of the teacup there and I'll pop that one down on the bottom first so it can be sitting down on the little tablecloth there um, yeah when you're filming a Facebook live you're always thinking of the next thing the next thing the next thing so it's um, quite common that I will lose my words when I'm filming but especially today because I'm tired as well so <laughs> but you'll forgive me won't you <laughs> All right, so with this one, I'm just, whoops, I'm just popping two dimensionals there across the center because I want to leave space to tuck the bottom down into the cup below and I want to leave space at the top to tuck the next cup in as well. So you've got to think about your positioning. Um, and I'm going to pop this one at, let's see, which way would it be sitting? I think like that. At a bit of an angle like that. There we go. All right, and then we'll do our last one. And this one, this time, we'll do the same um, because we need to leave a space across the top for our um, leafy plants to sit inside of our cup. And then with this one, I'm going to sit this more up straight. Actually, hang on a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Oops, it's stuck. I'll move it over a little bit. There we go good and then our little um, leafy images I don't know what you'd call what else you'd call them what else would you call these I guess they're like a little leafy image they don't have they do have flowers that coordinate with them that you could put on there as well if you wanted to or you can just leave it as a leafy image but I think I'm actually going to stick them down flat onto the card base so that the cups are sort of popped up but the um that looks like these are inside the cup did i just say pots i meant cups i think i said pots there we go a fern yes they could be it could be like a fern too they do look a little bit furnish 
Okay, there we go. We're going to add the little tag last. And then for our sentiment label, it's going to run across here. So as you can see, this is a really um, simple layout, actually. It's a really good sketch, this one. It's a simple sketch. Um, it's just a matter of working out your placement of your... And I've kept it really simple, too, with the cups, keeping them like a matching set but in different colours. Um, could make it lavender as well. Yes, you could too, Kathleen. That's a great idea. Um, but yeah, it's good to use sketches for a challenge and um, give you some other different parameters and get your creative juices flowing. Now, we've already got a lot of the sweet sorbet on there and we're going to have it on the tag too. So how about... If we use, okay, so there's that one. But I also did want to bring in the parakeet party because we had the parakeet party in the paper up here. If I show you that, we've got the parakeet party in there. So I was thinking maybe if I brought this in and wrap that round a couple of times, let's see what that would look like under the tag. It's quite um, light in colour. So it might be a little bit faint, but that's okay because we don't want it to take away from the tag either. But we could wrap that around there like that too. I think I like that. So let's, and do we want a bow or do we want, I don't think we want a bow. I don't think there's really room for a bow. Even if I tied a bow at the side, I think it's going to be too much. We can, we can try. We can have a little look and try. So I'll wrap that around the card. This is why I didn't adhere this down to the card base just yet. Because I wanted to leave room to um, wrap it, wrap the twine, I should say. Okay. So I'm gonna tie the twine and I'll tie it in a bow first and then we'll see how that looks. And then if I decide that I don't like that, then I can just tie it into a knot and we can tie it off at the back. But we'll try a bow first. I did, I left enough um, length to be able to do a bow. Might even need a sideways bow to fit in with the label because the label's quite long. And we'd only probably want a very small bow if we are going to have a bow at all. So, okay, so we've got that there. Now let's move that right over to the edge. So we can do that by squeezing our cardstock to just bow it gently and that slackens off your twine or ribbon and then that allows you to move it. So there we go. Let's try that. My little bow there wants to twist. So then if we pop that down there in the middle, it's not quite in the middle. Oh yeah, that would be all right. We could move that over just a little bit more over towards the label that way a bit more. And then we're going to mount this label up onto dimensionals. We can have the bow overlapping a little bit there like that. It might be a little bit close now. Just jiggle it over just a little bit. So this is why I didn't um, stick this down yet because this was I knew this was this part was going to be a little bit of fiddling to get it right. So I'm glad I didn't stick that down before I did this bit. There we go, and we can have a little sideways bow. can trim the ends. Oops. Oh, I picked up my blunt scissors. They're the ones that I use for my tape because they've I've had them for so long that they have gone a little bit blunt. There we go. So, yeah, so we can pop that there. That will be cute. Little sideways bow. And then we're going to mount this up on dimensional so that it's sort of straddling that um, twine there. So I'm going to put it, going to put some mini dimensionals down each side. And then we'll sort of stagger them a little bit so that we can thread the twine down, hopefully, between those because it's only a fairly narrow um, label, this one. And if it's sitting up on that twine, it's not going to sit flat. 
So I'll just remove the backings now from those dimensionals. Did I get them all? Yes, I did. All right, and then we'll just slip that in. Make sure that we get that in the middle. Move my little bow there. Slip that in there. And try and get that twine in between all those little dimensionals. Whoops. I lift up my little bow there. There we go. Oh, I should have had that over just a tight, a slight bit more. Wait, I'll see if I can. Can I lift that up? No. Okay. It's staying where it is. It's stuck. That's okay. There we go. So we've got our little, our little bow. All right. So um, I'll pop this onto the card now, and then we can decide about the little um, tag, the little tea bag tag. So I'm going to um, attach this with. Let me see. Do I want to pop that up on dimensionals, or do I want that flat? Um, I think I want it flat because it's quite a large piece. So I'm going to use some tear and tape so that I can adhere it down in sections, make sure that I get it straight. And then that way too, I can run the tear and tape over that twine to make sure that that portion of the card um, does stick down flat there too, where the twine is. Because otherwise it would um, sit up a little bit there on the edges where that twine is and I don't want it to do that. I want it to sit nice and flat. There we go. All right. So who else loves using sketches or sketch challenges for their cards? Do any of you use sketches? I love using sketches. I use them quite a bit, actually. They are really great, especially to, like at the moment, I'm doing a, um, as I said, I'm doing a sketch challenge for a blog for tomorrow, but I'm going to, um, oh, not, not I'm going to. I love to use sketches um, for every day as well because I just find it if you're a little bit stuck with creativity or you're not sure you're feeling a bit overwhelmed or um, not sure where to start with a project or you've lost your mojo I think that sketches are great there we go you sometimes use sketches Glenda fantastic that's really good Sometimes with my team as well, I give them sketch challenges because every month we have a um, a creative challenge in our team and I set different challenges for them with their creative challenges. And so sometimes I do give them sketch challenges to use. And um, yeah, it's really interesting to see how people use different um, sketches in different ways. There we go. All righty. So we've got our bling to add on as well and we've got our little tea bag which I'm trying to decide where I'm going to add that. I hadn't decided yet where I was going to add that. If I just add that coming out of the tea, my little tea bag tag coming out of the tea cup like that. I think we need a little bit of twine coming out of there. Uh, let's see which color shall I use for that I could use a little bit of this one. Oh, I should have stuck that in there before shouldn't I you know what I can do I can sneak a little glue dot under there oh Robin said she's about to do a challenge that she was asked to do and they're both with sketches ah awesome that's really cool I look forward to seeing them Robin all right, so I'm going to take a glue dot and just sneak that under there. Sneak that in under there. And we'll take a little bit of this twine. Oops, there's a dimensional backing. Those little dimensional backings, they get everywhere, don't they? And then I'm going to sneak this twine in under there where I put that glue dot because I should have done this before, but I totally forgot about adding the tag. So I'm trying to find where the sticky dot is there we go found it and then work out I'll cut that about there so you only need a little a little length of the um, 
for the baker's twine there. Let's put that all out of the way, off the desk. And then we'll get some more of those glue dots and we'll pop a couple of glue dots down at the back of this tag to adhere that twine to. Whoop. These glue dots, I opened up this new packet of glue dots the other day and these ones are particularly sticky, which is a good thing. There we go. All right. And then we'll add that to there. Let's just see the length that we need, probably about that much. So I might need to trim a little bit off that. This is the uh, the final work <laughs> at the moment, the fiddly, the fiddly bits. I'll just trim that off there. So we don't want that hanging out from underneath the tea bag tag. And get those little bits off. There we go. All right. And then I might just pop a little dimensional under the corner there. So I'll grab the mini dimensionals again. Because I've already got these teacups up on a layer of dimensional. So I want to have the tea bag sitting at the same height as the um, the teacups. So then we'll pop that there like that. There we go. And then if we want to really secure that well, we could, I could slip in a little glue dot just under the edge there too, just to hold that in place so that it doesn't move around at all. There we go, like that. And now we need to add our bling. All right, so let's put away all of our um, twine. So it comes in the five colors, as I said before, the five in colors. And there's heaps and heaps in there. I think each, I think each spool has about nine meters on it or something. What is it? Uh, yeah, 9.1 meters on each spool. So that's a lot of twine. That would keep you going for ages. All right, so let's bring in our pretty bling. Again, in those beautiful in colours. And I've just got the tag flipped over because otherwise you can't see the sweet sorbet ones. So this is the 2022 to 2024 in colour matte decorative dots. And we're going to use a few of these to um, decorate our card. Let's see, which colours don't we have? We don't have any Tahitian Tide yet. Oh, you'll notice too with the um, these matte dots that they're in like an ombre um, colour sp scheme, I guess you'd say. So you have the dark to light in each of those colours, in each of the um, in colours. So, yeah, so they're really, really pretty. So, yeah, we don't have any Tahitian Tide on this one yet. So how about, I think we've got all the other colours. Yes, so how about we try a little bit of Tahitian Tide. I might go with the lighter ones and we'll see how they look. Actually, we could even do a splattering of the different colors, couldn't we really? We could, and we've got all the different ombre colors too, so we can pick the different ones to use. They're quite similar. Let's go with the lighter one. Might need that one up there actually. It's really hard to choose which ones to use because there's they're all so beautiful and there's so many of them on here. No, I don't think I want to put that colour there. You know what? I think I'm going to go back to... Whoops. Hang on. Let me get that little one back there. There we go. I think... I think I'm not going to add the Tahitian Tide because there's, oh, there is a little bit of Tahitian Tide up there. I might add small ones of Tahitian Tide. But I do like these ones. I think these colours look nice. If I added a little one up here. Mm, no, I don't think I like the Tahitian Tide ones on there. Because predominantly we've got the deeper blues, haven't we? So I think that they look better. 
there we go let's just go with that you could add more if you wanted to um, you could add another splattering of them down here you could even add another little one up here on the tag could add one there on the tag that would be cute and then how about we put one more deeper colored one down here somewhere let's see um let's go with one of the darker ones what if we add that down there I guess you could you could really just go crazy with the because um, you've got a slimline card too so it's large it's long so you could really add as many of the matte decorative dots as you wanted to there we go how about we leave it as that we've got five one two three four five should always have odd numbers when you're doing um, any rhinestones or um, decorative elements your little embellishments so there we go so that is my little card oh this one's lifting up a little bit on the edge there it's all right I'll give him a little push and oh you know what I didn't do with my twine I always separate the ends of my twine for a bit of added texture and I didn't do that today did I so let's just do that let's ruffle them up a little bit there we go so there you go so there's my little card today so that'll be on my blog tomorrow so look out for that and I'll, I'll post that tomorrow too for on my blog um, so that you can see it there but just really cute and I really like the um, the colors the color combination we didn't have so much Tahitian Tide and um, parakeet party but just a little splattering there is a tiny little bit of Tahitian Tide in that designer series paper but it's very subtle it's hard to see it so there you go all right well i hope you enjoyed that one i'm going to ah oh, thank you everyone great i'm glad that you like it thanks robin thanks glenda um i'm going to cover up the camera and flip that back up to my face so that i can say goodbye to you face to face because i always like to do that so bear with me for a moment while i do that and then i can say goodbye to you all and if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me before I finish up as well. I'll flip my cameras and readjust my lights and try not to lose the lampshade on my light again. Because <laughs> that was noisy when I did that the first time, wasn't it? Don't want to do that again. There we go. Okay. Great. So there's my little card. It's quite long, isn't it? For like a slimline, slimline cards are quite a different size to our typical cards, but I really like them. Aren't they cute? So I hope you liked that today. I hope that gave you some more ideas of how to use your, your stamps and dies and incorporate the designer series paper in a different way as well. Um, and um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing what you create with this bundle. It's a really, really beautiful bundle and um, I'm looking forward to having more of a play with the designer series paper as well. And the um, some of that designer series paper looks beautiful die cut in the teacups as well. So I'm looking forward to having a play and doing some of that too. So I hope you really like that today. Thank you all so much for joining me. I think the ends on my ribbon are a little bit long, my twine. I think I might need to trim that down a bit, but apart from that, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out for that sketch challenge so thank you all so much for being with me today um, as I said if you have got any questions um, oh thanks Deborah um, oh you're very welcome Robin you're welcome Helen says love the card Mandy going now so we can phone our son in Malaysia oh lovely have a lovely chat with your son all right, well, if there's anything that I can help you with or you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me. And remember that if you would like a copy of um, the beautiful new annual catalogue and you don't already have a demonstrator here in Australia, then feel free to get in contact with me and I would love to send one of those out to you. 
Um, and again, just remember too that if um, you would like to join my team, we would love to welcome you into our beautiful creative community. We have such a great time together and um, I'll be there to help you along as well. You can join for the discount. You can join for the business opportunity. You can join just to create with us um, and have some creative fun with us. So whatever, whatever you would like, is what you can do when you join Stampin' Up! So totally up to you. Ah, thank you, Dimity. You're very welcome. No worries at all. So thank you all so much for being with me today. I will be live again next Monday, all being well, um, at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So I look forward to seeing you all again then. Um, and until then, happy crafting, everyone. Have a great week. Bye.